So for today's project, you're going to need four pieces of 12 by 12 paper. Two of them need to be your card bases. I'm going to use two pieces of white for my card base. You're going to need a solid color that can be what you emboss on because we're going to do some embossing. And then you'll need a pattern paper to be the mat for these cards. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our white paper down into our card bases. Now in doing the math, here's what I have discovered. The first thing you need to do is you need to cut down your paper to 8 inches by 12 inches. So you're going to put this in your trimmer to 8 inches, okay, nice and lined up, and then cut it. Now don't get rid of this because this is a card base, so just sit that to the side for now. Now we're going to take this and we're going to cut it down to 8 inches again. Sit this aside. Now then, we're going to take these pieces and cut them at four, and I'll show you why. Now when you cut like I just showed you, you end up with one, two, three pieces that are four by eight. So when you fold these in half, they're a four by four card. But remember, I cut two pieces of cardstock at one time. So I got two, four, six of those bases, okay? Now remember I told you this is a base, don't get rid of it. This is that piece we cut off first. We're going to cut it down to 8 inches. I don't like that end. It's got a little bend on it. I'm going to use this end. Cut it down to 8 inches. Now we end up with 2, uh, 4, 6, 8 card bases. All right? Super simple. Two pieces of 12 by 12, and this is what you have left over. Now, because I did two pieces, I got two of these squares left over. But if you are just doing one, you'd have one square left over. Don't get rid of this. Put it in your scrap drawer. This is perfect for sentiments or anything. Now, I want to go ahead and score all my card bases at four inches so I can get a nice four by four card. So, I'm just going to put these into my um, scoreboard. I'm using the mini for this because I don't need a lot of space. I'm going to score it at four inches. And while it's in there, this is what I like to do. I've had a lot of people ask me this. I like to push the fibers down from the paper. Then I like to fold this while it's in my scoreboard or scoreboard and line it up in the corner to crease it. That gives me a better crease that way. And I like that it pushes the fibers out and you don't end up with that little bead on the inside of your fold. Personal preference, do what you like, but that's the way I like to do it. Now I have them all um, scored and folded. And now what I'm going to do is crease them with a bone folder. I'm just going to take my bone folder and just press down and get a nice crisp crease all at one time. See how I did that? That saves some time. So now our card bases are ready. Now if you wanted to round your edges or do a decorative punch at this point, this would be the place to do that on your edges. I'm not. I'm going to keep them square. So now they are done. We'll set them aside for now. Let's go back to our cutting. And this time we're going to cut our designer paper. Now that we have our card bases done, we're going to cut our designer paper or our pattern paper down to be our mat for our embossed pieces that we're going to create. Now here's the thing about this paper. I'm actually using a card stock, but you could use a paper here. You just don't want to use a paper for your card base. I cut this little piece off because it's white and it has that hole that's from the paper pad. I don't need that. So now this is going to be cut down into three and three quarter inch squares. The reason for this is your cards are four by four. So you want to make sure that this is a quarter of an inch shorter so you can have that nice one eighth of an inch border all the way around. So I'm going to go through here and cut this paper at three and three quarters all the way down. And it's going to leave us with a strip about like this. Don't get rid of this strip because I want to show you what I've done. I'm using a paper pad and anytime I use a paper pad for a project, I take all the scraps and I put them into the paper pad on the front like under the front flap. So I pulled some of these out because I might want to use some of these in our card making today. So just sit those aside with your scraps. Now that we have these three and three quarter by 12 inch strips, we need to cut these down to three and three quarter. This is where we're going to get our three and three quarter inch squares. Again, don't toss these. Put these in your scrap pile because we might use those for something. All right, so now that we've got these cut, these become the mats that go on top of our card bases. So it'll be card base, and then there's all of our mats cut for that. Put those aside. You don't need those right now. Now let's work on that solid piece, which we're using for that is craft paper. And we're going to do basically the same thing, but this time we need it to be one quarter of an inch smaller than that. So we're going to cut this one down to three and a half all the way down. Thank you. 
Now this time you're going to be left with an inch and a half by 12 inch piece of paper. This is a very usable piece. Don't get rid of this. We're certainly going to be able to use this, so I'm going to put this into my scrap pile. I could even use that for a mini album binder. So if you're somebody who makes a lot of mini albums, put that into your binder scraps or whatever you use to make your, your album binding with. Don't let that get gone. And we'll finish cutting. So now we have three and a half by three and a half inch squares. Now let's look at what we've created so far. We have eight white card bases made from two 12 by 12 pieces of paper, or card stock. We have nine card mats. Yes, I said nine. We only need eight, but the way we cut them, it gave us nine. So we'll have one left over. This is a big enough piece to be a great scrap to go in your scrap drawer, but you may mess something up and need an extra. So until we're done, it's going to stay in the pile. And then we also ended up with nine three and a half by three and a half pieces. These pieces will stack. This is how this will go. It's going to stack on top of this plaid piece, which is super cute. Say plaid piece three times fast. And then this will stack on top of our white base just like this. Now these are just the colors I use. Can you imagine all the colors you could use in the different kinds of paper? I think this is really cute together. Now we get to have some fun. So basically what we've created is little three and a half by three and a half inch canvases that we can do anything we want to. And I'm going to show you some stuff that I'm going to do. Now today. I'm about to do some serious stamping, actually embossing. I'm going to use some Versamark ink and I'm going to use this white um, embossing powder from close to my heart. It's not quite white. It's a little creamier than that. And that's okay. I'm good with that. And I'm using a bunch of my stamp sets. When I say my stamp sets, some of you may not realize that I create stamp sets and sell them on my Etsy store. If you're interested in any of the stamps I'm going to use today, there'll be a link below for any of those stamp sets. And here's what we're going to do. This is my ugly sweater um, stamp, which I just love. This is some embossing ink from Versamart. And I'm going to ink this guy up really good. And I'm going to stamp him in the middle of this little card. So we're just going to treat, treat this like a little canvas. We're just going to play and have fun. So I'm going to stamp him right about here and press him down. Now you're seeing another um, stamp here. That's from Oh Snap. That's a Polaroid frame and I keep it on this block all the time just because I use it a good bit and that way I don't have to look for it when I need it. I know where it is. Now I've got that one done and now I've got the Rudolph picture from that same ugly sweater stamp set. I'm going to ink it up and stamp him in the center of this little ugly sweater. That's cute. And these little, this little snowflake from the same set. It's kind of a like a winter sweater kind of snowflake. I'm just going to come around the edges and stamp it on and off. And I really don't care if it's a perfect image or not. I just want the feel of some snowflakes falling around. You guys probably cannot even see what I'm doing because I'm doing this in the clear Versamark ink. But it's there. Once I put the white on it, you'll be able to see it. Okay, move all this stuff out of the way for a few minutes. Did you notice that white piece of paper I had underneath my stamping? The reason for that is we're going to do some embossing with the powder. So I wanted to have this to be able to tump the powder off of here onto. So now I'm going to take my embossing powder and I just take it straight from the jar and I'm just going to tump this all over this little dude. Now you'll be able to see it. Let me tap it off. Can you see all that? Isn't that cute? I love that. Now let's heat that up. Now I don't like to emboss directly on my cutting mat because it tends to buckle it because I use an industrial strength embossing gun. It's one that I have that was given to me and I like it so I use it and it's, I use it on low. So I'm going to heat the gun up off screen and then I'm going to melt this where you guys can see it. So now you can see it all embossed. Isn't that cute? I love that. All right, so now this one is as simple as assembling this little note card. So we're going to take this piece, one of our mats, and one of our card bases, and we're going to put that together. I'm just using my art glitter glue to assemble these. I'll put a link to it below if you're interested in this glue. It's an amazing glue, and it is fast, fast drying, and you do not need very much of it at all. 
Now, to put this onto our card, I'm going to pop it up a little bit with some foam, um, some foam tape because I like it to be a little bit dimensional. So I'm just going to cut some of this and put some here. I'm just going to use one thickness of it. Let me just peel off those backers. And this is ready to go onto our card front. So we just center that, stick it down, and that is card number one. And it was super easy to do. I really like it. Now, I want to go inside and do a little sentiment. And this is where you can play and have fun with all the stuff in your collection. I'm going to go back to that same stamp set, and I'm going to put in Dawn We Now Our Ugly Sweater. I think that would be cute. So I'm going to grab this one out of here, put it onto a block. I'm going to use some Memento Tuxedo Black little guy up and I think I'm gonna put it down here in the corner nope put it right in the middle pretty much centered Dawn we now our ugly sweater I like that so card number one is totally done and we have one ready for Christmas Good deal. Let's do some more embossing while we're doing it. I'm going to take a stamp from G's Teddy Bear Lane. That's the name of this stamp set. Let me find a block big enough for it. So I'm going to use that same block I used earlier, and I'm going to ink this with Versamark because we're going to do some more embossing. Just like so. And I'm just going to take this and put it right to the edge and kind of center it on this page. Again, you can see that other stamp here, so you might not can see exactly what I'm doing, but when I lift it up, you'll be able to see it. So there's that. And you can mix all these up and use those same snowflakes or anything you want to use. I'm going to come right here and pick a sentiment to go in there. And I think I'm going to use Candy Cane Crossing. I really like that one. All right, put it onto a block. I'm going to ink it up in Versamark. Now, you might have noticed that I am not putting any... Um, embossing powder on the like the the powder to keep um, fingerprints and things off the paper I'm not doing that first the reason I'm not is because I don't really mind if it gets a little sprinkly in places because I think it'll look like snow if you want to make sure you get a nice crisp image and you don't want all that look make sure that you go ahead and put a embossing tool like this one let me show you real quick like this guy go ahead and do that first but I'm not worried about that because I like those little sparklies those little sprinkles now on this one, I'm going to use another one of my stamps, which is the Stitched Line, and it is from the Action Stamp Set. I'm going to embo do embossing with this one as well, and I'm going to come right across this edge here along the bottom. I'm going to stitch this one all the way up and down on this side. I think that's cute. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Going to emboss it on this side. Now, because this um, image that I did is kind of close to the bottom, I'm not going to do the stitching on the top or the bottom. I think it'll be fine without it. All right, let's go back to our embossing powder. And you, of course, you could change your color. I'm just going to keep using this creamy color. So we'll just tap that on everywhere. Then tap it off. And I do have some specks, which I think look good. I like them. Those little white specks, I'm going to leave those. Let's clean this mess up. Let's heat emboss this one as well. Now, this one is good and embossed, and I really like how that turned out. Now, I'm going to take a red pen and go right inside of these little candy cane stripes. And on every other one, it's not really a red pen, it's a red marker. Avoiding the embossing, the white embossing, we don't want to get on that. But I'm going to go between it and just color these little guys in. So that one is ready to assemble. Let's put it together. Bring over a card base and stick this down. Just like so. Now I want to stamp on the inside. Now this is a Merry Christmas sentiment. This comes from my stamp set called Santa Stuck. So I'm going to use that one and some Tuxedo Memento Black ink. And we're going to ink that up and put that on the inside. Now 
Anytime you have a wide or a large stamp, make sure you press in the center. You know, sometimes you'll get that little highlighted area in the middle where you missed it. Press that block in the middle just to make sure that gets down. So there's Merry Christmas, and then it looks like this on the front. So we have two done. So we have our ugly sweater and we have this one. I'm gonna keep going doing the same thing and when we get done, we're gonna do one more step. So as you can see, I have all eight of them embossed and put together, just like we did with the first two. Now I'm gonna show you some more of these as we get going, some of the little images, but I told you I was gonna do one more step, but I've decided to do two more. The first step we're gonna do is we're gonna embellish these a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is just decide what I want to put on each one or what embellishing I want to do to each one just by laying them out and looking at them. And I know on this Rudolph, he needs a little red nose. What Rudolph doesn't have a red nose, right? So I'm just going to color his little nose in on in red. And then I'm going to do the same on this little sweater where I put him. Just like that. And don't want to put any red here. Maybe no, maybe no. I think I want this bow to be red. I love a big red bow at Christmas. I put them on all the windows of my house. I just love them. Put them on wreaths on my house, but I love big red bows. So get that colored in. Now, these take a little while with the embossing. So this was probably a 20 or 30 minute stamping and embossing venture to do that part when I cut away. But the cool thing is you just kind of pull out your stamp sets and you just play and you have a good time and it's just kind of fun. You know what? I do want to color this pole like we did the other one. I think I want to color these bricks in. So as you can see now, everything has a little touch of red in it. So just somewhere on the card. The next thing I want to do is I want to take a Wink of Stella pen. I'm going to use the clear one. If you're not familiar with Wink of Stella, I'll link it below. This is basically a brush pen that has glitter in it. So instead of actually using glitter, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to move all of these out of the way and I'm going to pull them back in one at a time and just kind of glitter them wherever I want to. I want the snow to be glittered on this card. I think that'll be cute. And you don't have to use clear you, if you have color, like if you have red um, or if you have white, whatever color you want to use, you could do this with anything. I just think this is cute to add a little sparkle to all the cards too. So the color we're using throughout them is craft white and red and then a little bit of sparkle. So I'm going to do that on every single one of them. I want to sparkle this whole lantern and all the snow. I think that is cute. And then we'll come back and do another in just a minute. I'm going to do a little more embellishing. But on this one, I want to color this whole chimney in and glitter. Just a touch on every card. On this one, I glittered his boots. On this one, I definitely want to glitter these antlers. antlers. That's hard to say. Now you can certainly be done right here, but there's one other thing I want to do. So I went through, I glittered and I red, put little red on all of these, but look here, I also have envelopes. While I was making these, I thought, what if you don't have 4x4 four four envelopes and you're not sure how to create them? Well, the other day I did a tutorial showing you how to make envelopes, and I will link that one below. That one shows three different ways of making envelopes. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to make a 4x4 four four envelope. I've done the math for you so you don't have to do it. Here's what you do. It's a 7x7 seven seven inch piece of, and this is just copy paper. So you're going to take a 7x7 seven seven inch piece of paper, really simple, take your ruler, and a pencil and you're going to mark every side of this paper at three inches and at four inches all the way around three inches and four inches just like this now if you have an envelope maker an envelope punch board anything even if you have the scoreboards with the envelope makers on the back of them just use that but if you don't have it i want you to still be able to make your envelope so if you're not sure how to do it this is how you make a four by four envelope so seven by seven, oh, we're gonna need a ruler again. Seven by seven paper marked at three and four inches on both sides, okay? And now here's what you do. Take your ruler and place it on the second dot. Here's what I mean by that. From the corner, you'll have your first mark and your second mark. Place it on the second mark. From this corner, place it on the second mark, all right? And then lift up the edge and fold that. Basically, you're creasing it, okay? Now turn the page one time. Again, 
from the corner, go to your second mark, from the corner to your second mark, line your ruler up to each mark, lift up that edge and fold. I'm not creasing at this point, I'm just kind of getting a fold mark. Second mark, all the way around, doing the same thing all the way around, folding it up, and then the second mark again. Now you're thinking, so we did two marks for no reason. Well, no, we used both of those marks. You just don't see it until you get to this point. Now when you get here, I'm gonna turn it over. You can see those little marks where they cross over. What we wanna do is we wanna cut these little um, triangle pieces out where these marks cross. So we were just making marks for ourselves to know where to get rid of this extra paper we don't need, which is these little triangles. This is very similar to what I did on Wednesday's video. The one, I, like I said, I'll link it below. It's very similar to that, except we actually measured this one instead of just folded. On the other one in the other video, we just folded. All right, so now we have this. Does this look familiar? Mm-hmm. If you have a punch board or if you've seen it used, it looks very familiar. All right, so now we fold in our sides, just like so. Get those nice and lined up. We get our adhesive, which I had hid from myself already. Run that down this bottom flap. Fold it up nice and neat, and you have a 4x4 envelope that our cards will fit in, just like so. Check it out. So you can make your own envelopes too. You have your cards and your envelopes. So let me tell you what it took to make all of this, okay? These envelopes take one sheet of paper each, one sheet of copy paper each, because you need a seven by seven piece. So this is eight pieces of copy paper, okay, or computer paper, or if you're like me, you remember typing paper. <laughs> this takes two pieces of 12 by 12 for your card bases, one piece of 12 by 12 for your mat, and one piece of 12 by 12 for your top layer, and then it's just decorating. Pretty simple, huh? Now. If you put this into a gift package, this is a perfect gift for somebody for the holidays or before the holidays so they can use them. But if you just always need a card for something, this is perfect for you to have in your stash. These little 4x4 four four cards that you could decorate very neutral and just have little stacks of cards. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I love to be able to do that and have very little waste. We had hardly any waste, just little strips from the sides of the paper. Also, when you're cutting your copy paper down to 7x7, seven seven, don't get rid of that strip. That makes perfect note pieces of paper for your desk. Cut it into little squares, sit it at your desk, and when you need a note, you got it. Hey, thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to do one more thing I want to tell you about. Um, if you will head over to the blog that I will link below to the blog post, a lot of you tell me that you own all of my stamp sets and you like to see how they're used together. I'm going to do a blog post showing you what stamps I use with what to get all of these looks because I mixed my stamp sets up a good bit for that. I want to show you so you can be able to see it. So head over to the blog post for that and I will see you on Monday for more crafty on Saturday for Scripture Art Journal. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye.